Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the property subcommittee of the 10th of January 22. My apologies for the slight delay in beginning this meeting, but we are now ready to go. Um, I'd just like to wish everyone a belated Happy New Year and um, we will uh, proceed with the meeting. For those members who wish to contribute, please put a Q or a C in the chat box. Uh, and could I then ask Charlotte if she would like to do uh, a roll call to confirm who's in attendance this morning? OK, thank you. Morning, everyone. Um, obviously, we have Councillor Lyle Convener present this morning. Um, if you could just for the rest of the I'll just call your names if you could just confirm your attendance. Councillor McCall. Here. Councillor Bailey. Present. Councillor Lane. Councillor Lane. I don't know if there's a problem there. He was there a little while ago. Councillor Lang, are you muted just now? Uh, having a problem with the unmute button. I was six, seven attempts to get it to come oh, through. Dear. So sorry, I am here. Yep. Right, thank you. Councillor McEwen. Present. Councillor Shires. Present. Councillor Wilson. Present. That's all members. Good, thank you very much, Charlotte. Can I ask members, are there any declarations of interest in any of the items this morning? If you're unable to put uh, an indication in the chat box, please shout out. No, nope. uh, moving on, we have requests for deputations this morning. If it's two, two requests for deputations. Um, oh, I, I will stop now. Uh, Councillor McCall. Sorry, thank you, convener, and sorry for interrupting. I, I would just like a point of clarification. I'm just trying to to understand a little bit more before we go on to um, to, to look at the deputations. What's uh, actually being asked of us today? Um, there's been a couple of phone calls over the weekend and various bits and pieces. I'm just trying to be sure and make sure that the committee is is sure um, of what it is that we're actually here to to look at and discuss. Um, so um, I guess my first question really is uh, to officers, is, is this a, a coming forward as a form of a, an appeal? Um, and can I get clarity as to whether the property subcommittee has any formal um, appeal process? Um, I know we have ones very specifically in planning and in the, the local review, um, but is there any formal appeals process and does this fall under that category? OK, thank you for the question. Um, Mr Fogg will probably be the, the officer to respond. Yes, thank you, convener. This is not an appeal. Um, there is no process for an appeal against the decision of the property subcommittee. My understanding of the position is the petition seeks, uh, invites the property subcommittee to revisit the matter that it determined in June of last year, but it can't be an appeal process. Um, from because there is no statutory appeal process. So, <laughs> I think the committee to reconsider uh, the previous matters uh, determined back in June of last. Sorry, can I again just for clarity? So there is no process on appeal, but therefore should there not be a reviewed application then, rather than a request for us to review our previous decision? A reviewed application to apply for um, a lease. Um, not sure the material difference. Um, the, the the effect of the petition is to invite the property subcommittee to to revisit the matter previously considered back in June of last year, and the petitioners are allowed to do that. It would be for the committee to decline uh, to to reconsider the matter or to agree to do so. Um, as it saw fit. Um, so it's not an appeal process, but it's mm -hmm. simply it the petition having been lodged in, I think, October of last year. It is necessary that the Council considers it, um, given that it was a matter taken by the property subcommittee. It's right that the property subcommittee itself decides whether or not it wishes to to accede to the request and revisit the matters. But it's, if you like, it, it's, it is a revisit, a rehearing. It's not an appeal as such. 
It's just looking afresh at the same issues, if the committee were so minded. OK, thank you very much indeed, convener, and thank you very much, Jeff, for that. Thank you. OK, thank you for the clarification. Um, we have requests for deputations. Do the committee agree to hear the deputations this morning? Uh, um, convener, my chat isn't working that, that no, well. Fine. Absolutely fine, Councillor Lane. So sorry for interjecting. Um, so as this is, you know, a decision to, if we're going to rehear it, will this mean that, you know, the arguments and the petitions will be heard again today? And then the then we would have to go to have an if we agree to have another meeting then we will we'll, we'll go again um, and discuss it all again so that would be like you know it's been planning and then that would be three times these, the same people will have to come and, and rerun their arguments in front of us is that my is that my understanding of seeing the deputations today <clears throat> Um, not necessarily, Councillor Lane. My understanding as convener, you have a discretion then. Um, going forward and the committee has a discretion going forward should um, we decide to uh, review uh, the decision and it comes back to the property subcommittee or indeed it may well come back to the planning committee they would then have the, the um, right to determine whether they hear the deputations again or not but the, the, the question the only question i can ask today is this committee minded to hear the deputations today I don't have any uh, influence over a future committee's view of it, and I stand to be corrected by Mr. Fogg if he thinks it requires correcting. And maybe Mr. Fogg could uh, clarify as well as why would it come back to the planning committee, as you stated? Uh, I, I think with respect to the convener, I would not be expecting the matter to come back to the planning committee. The planning committee has determined the application um, and uh, resolved to, uh, it was minded to grant uh, approval subject to a planning agreement being entered into. So unless there was a, a material change, such as an inability to secure that agreement requiring the matter to come back to planning committee, I think the planning committee's role is effectively an end. Um, and under the um, planning procedural regulations, there really isn't a reason uh, or basis in which it could go back to that committee. It's different for the property subcommittee. It's not so um, tightly regulated by uh, legislation um, and it resolved not to uh, market this uh, site for a class three business use. And they've now got a petition asking it to reconsider that same decision. Um, so I think there is a contrast to be made with the Planning uh, and Development Management Committee, whose role is essentially at an end in this matter, but not 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 the property subcommittee. Thank you very much. I stand corrected, Councillor Lane. But um, then, thanks, thanks. Okay. So the question the question was, um, are, do we agree to hear the deputations this morning? Um, Councillor Wilson, sorry, has asked a follow-up question. Th thanks, convener. Um, my, my question is in relation to your question about do we agree to hear the deputations. We've we've heard and we've had, sorry, we've had over the last few days a fair volume of written communications um, which have to a, a fair degree re-emphasised the, the previous arguments that were put forward. Um, on, on the matter and I think one of the, the relevant considerations we need to make is have we any new material before us um, as a result of reading all of these um, emails and representations that would make it necessary to hear the deputations again. Um, I, I simply ask the question of, of, of the committee as well as yourself, convener. OK. <laughs> Thank you for that. Well, the, the question to me is, um, is is for the committee to determine um, if, if they wish to hear um, the deputations again. Um, we have before us a petition which I believe um, we are obliged to hear um, as we are the appropriate committee to do so. I believe that's what Mr Fogg said earlier. So I, I have that, but we also have deputations where the um, one would feel that, that people would possibly feel they have a right to be heard um, should the, the um, petition be brought before us today. 
but that's that's for the committee to decide. So I see Councillor Lane is in for a comment. I don't know if that's a historical one, Councillor Lane, or it's a new comment. No, it's not historical. Thank you, convener. I've managed to get my chat function to operate, so possibly operate an error. Um, I think we're here. Um, my view uh, is that we, we should hear the deputations. So I just thought I'd get that, and that's my view. OK, thank you for that. Is, is there anyone who feels that we shouldn't hear the deputations? Councillor McEwen, you have a question. It's, I suppose it's more of a theoretical thing, but that's what our whole discussion has been. Should we agree, Mr Fogg, to take this to another review later on? Would the this committee have time to see it before the May election? Or would this be looked at by new councillors post the May election? Or do we have time in this committee's structure and timing and things that we're going to look at in the future to see this before? So will, will this group of people who are sitting here today be able to see a review should it? Kind of I think that impinges on whether we... The to be that, but to that would be yes, but, but equally okay. it will be determined by events. Um, no, I get that. I get my simple answer would be yes, Councillor McEwen. Right, I support I support hearing the deputations then. Thank you. Councillor McCall. Uh, yes, convener, thank you. It was really just a comment uh, just to state that um, I, I also agree we, we should hear the deputations, but I have a real serious concern that we are going to hear information, uh, as Councillor Wilson has already uh, uh, put out, that we've already been given um, we've already seen, we've already read, and we've already listened to um, in a previous subcommittee. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to hear the deputations, but I would like to, to highlight the fact that this should be new and additional information over and above the emails that we have all received um, in, in the deputation. So I, I'm, I'm just mindful of that. I'm mindful of your comments, Councillor McCall, but um, unfortunately each uh, person giving a deputation has 10 minutes and, and that is the, the standing orders as they are, so it is up to them to be as succinct as possible. Councillor Wilson. Notwithstanding the comments have been made, um, Convener, I would like to move formally that we hear the deputations. OK, thank you. Do I hear, uh, do I have an amendment? Councillor Lane. Uh, Pro uh, Provis, sorry, uh, convener. Um, uh, just for clarification, will we have a chance to uh, question officers uh, about where we are with uh, what seem to be the germane issue uh, uh, about um, money put forward in 2018 for car parking spaces, which has not been um, identified or used, or, uh, and and to, to find out where we are with with that at this at this committee meeting. Are, are there officers here who can? My, uh, my understanding, uh, Councillor Lane. Thank you for the question. Is that we will have the opportunity to uh, question officers when we come to the report section um, this morning, where equally we can uh, ask questions from the petitioner from the deputations when it comes to the report, we should then, in my view, be entitled to ask questions of officers at that stage when we're dealing with the report. And I don't see any disagreement with that, so I'm happy to um, take that as the route forward, Councillor Lane, if you're in agreement. Thanks very much for that, convener. It's just for clarity. Thank you. No, not at all. Um, so <clears throat> given that we are uh, minded to hear the deputations, which I think is the correct decision. Um, we then move on to the next item, which is um, the, the petition. And um, I would ask Councillor McCall if she would like to, as Deputy Convener, like to take over and advise members of the procedure. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Convener. Um, the, the procedure is we've agreed to um, to refer to the petition. Um, this is the first time this has ever come to Property Sub, so there's a little bit of, uh, of new to this. Um, so that will allow us then to, to move forward to hear the deputations um, that are coming forward as the petition has been put forward. So the first person that would like to speak to us is Ms McCallum. Uh, Ms McCallum, are you online? Are you, can you hear me? 
You can. Thank you very much indeed. Good morning. Um, you're uh, coming to address the committee. So um, if you just give me a second, I'll just uh, explain how that works. You have 10 minutes to address the committee, um, which you can put forward your, your, your deputation. I'll be doing the timing on that um, and I will let you know when there is a minute left to go. Um, so I'll just kind of brief interruption around about uh, nine minutes just to let you know that there's a, a minute left. And if you could uh, start wrapping up at that point. Um, and basically, I will start the clock as soon as you uh, start talking. So over to you. That's perfect. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the We Choo Choo. I have sent you all the slides on Friday, so I'll be referring to the slides today. I want to highlight error. I'm not trying to be rude. I just want to point out a lot of things presented to council was wrong. Slide one, I, I respect that council on the committee on the 14th June came to decision based on the facts before them that day. Slide two, I want to be clear the petition is on change.org that has 1,185 signatures. Slide three, your briefing document says PKC was approached by businessmen. Excuse, excuse me, bear with me. I wonder if you could speak up, please, or sit a little closer to the microphone. Um, I, I do um, have some hearing difficulties, but I am. But normally I can pick things up OK. Unfortunately, I'm not picking up your uh, speech very clearly. So That's I want right. to you you just come a little closer to the microphone, possibly. Thank you. I have paused the clock and happy to start again, and I'll make sure there's a couple of extra seconds given at the end of the 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the We Choo Choo. I have sent you all the slides on Friday, so I'll be referring to the slides today. I, when I highlight error, I am not trying to be rude. I just want to point out a lot of things presented to the councillor was wrong. Slide one, I respect that councillors on the committee on the 14th of June came to a decision based on the facts before them that day. Slide two, I want to be clear the petition is on change.org that has 1,185 signatures. Slide three, your briefing document says PKC was approached by a businessman. I am a woman and so is my mum. I am not being petty. It shows that official have not taken care. Slide four, PKC seemed to always forget, forget me, even though my name is on the planning application. It's a shame my lawyer has to add my name to all your documents. Again, I am not being awkward. Those things are important to be correct. Slide five, I think it's important that official acknowledge we are a local family, not a businessman. Slide six, May, they, may I therefore present myself again? My name is Mimi Callum. I am 19. I'm the one with the wig on. It's complicated, don't ask. I'm a dual national, Thai by birth and British by adoption. When I was seven, I became homeless in Thailand. My parents, Fergus and Isra, brought me to the UK and adopted me. I live and work in Pitlochry. I own a third of this business. This project is my future and my community, not a businessman. Slide seven. One of these is a fact. Caitlia says PKC have not found spaces during the meeting in June and they little John found them 90 minutes later. Perhaps they were just mislaid. Let's get real. Both can't be true. Slide eight. Let's just stick to the facts. Evidence before the committee in June 2021, PKC did not know about the 12 spaces. Perhaps they were mislaid. It's a little bit like waiting for buses. Your committee didn't hear any verbal objections for 10 years. Then you get three in 15 minutes. Wow, what a coincidence. You also got two GTPR breaches, one by your CEO and one by David Little John. Not ideal. Evidence before the committee in January 2022. David's right, we don't have planning permission because your lawyer's not able to sign it till today. Amazing coincidence again. Perhaps it will be signed 90 minutes after the meeting closes. To be accurate, let me clarify the number of the people who signed the petition is 1,218 and not 1,185 anymore. It's fact that the community council position was neutral. It's a fact that 27 residents supported the planning application and 14 objected. Slide nine, sticking to the facts. The meeting, in, the meeting on the 14th June was not perfect. Lisa Simpson has acknowledged that. Slide 10, stick to the facts. We think we had a pathway to a lease because PKC said we had. We agreed the path included convincing this committee. I know that PKC told the objectors we had not discussed the lease, but that sounds a lot like a PKC problem rather than a mere problem. You might get lucky. Maybe they're not on the Zoom call. Slide 11, the first image is how I thought PKC would set out a pathway to a lease. The second image is how it feels now. Slide 12, sticking, stick to the facts. Which statement is true? You can see from slide 12 that 
in June, David Lillard-John said one option was to lease without advertising. How does that match with what he says now? 513, stick to the fact, David Lillard-John stated that the motion was not linked to the car park. How would the record show it was discussed in the amendment? Slide 14, stick to the fact, PKC said it's not about our application. That's weird. You don't see many buildings with trains sticking out of them, do you? Slide 15, PKC keeps saying you didn't discuss our proposal. Get real, it's a thing that's on YouTube. You now have a petition that is also online. We will also have planning consent when the document is hopefully signed in another 90 minutes or so. Our proposal will bring new jobs and new tourists and loses no space and has community support. I care a lot about the two of the three objectors. We have sp spoken to one already and listened to her suggestion and we'll take them on board. Sadly, we cannot do much about we sadly we cannot do much about the concern about the trees because PKC cut them down. We are not as concerned about the businessman objector who forgot to mention his approval pl approved plan to build a bigger restaurant in the same area. Slide 16. I met Convino Lao in person, and he explained I had to wait six months. I did. So hi. Convino Lao has expressed his concern about leasing a car park, which might open a floodgate. The next restaurant car is being scrapped in 2045. It's a long-term problem. Slide 17. The first image is a restored and recycled train that fits into the location. The second is a burger van in a car park. Allowing a converted train with community support does not mean every car park will get a burger van. Slide 18. Why has our project become so entangled in pit lockery wide parking discussion? We're willing to do what the councillors and the community council ask us to do. Slide 19. We are able to be, if you, if you allow this to be advertised, opportunity can be reviewed. We could work with your highway men to submit the planning application for those 12 spaces. Oops, I meant the highway team. Objective will still have chance to be heard. PKC may think you might get a better offer than mine. Well, that's fantastic. It means pit lockery win even more. Slide 20, permitting the opportunity to be advertised, leaves the three chances for objectives to be heard. Slide 21, alteration to the car park. We do not challenge the request changes and are prepared to fully fund them. David Lowe John has indicated those alterations will need to go through the planning committee. This again offered opportunities for the community to express its objections or support. Slide 22, the bigger question is the car parking and pit lockery. This is complex. Some of our community want more parking spaces, others do not. Fortunately, we are not involved in this. We don't reduce spaces. Slide 23, the future is not our car parks, it's our new trains and our renovated station. Slide 24, the future is pit lockery huge increase in the train passenger and it's 22 trains a day. Slide 25, our future is not car park, it is our seven bus route running on new electric buses. Slide 26. Scotland has signed up to a 20% reduction in private car mileage and your climate changes plan talk about penalising parking as an option. More car parking spaces is less green than a recycled train that brings people to put awkward on trains and electric buses. Slide 27. We have an economic impact assessment. Two, we have a parking audit and a parking neutral proposal. Three, we won't cost the local taxpayer anything. Four, we have, we have planning consent. Five, we have local support. Six, we'll bring unique attraction that brings new jobs and new tourists to our community. Slide 28, in summary, please consider that our proposal will not decrease parking spaces. It won't open floodgate for a burger van. Pet lockery economy has suffered and deteriorated for years. We are offering an environmentally friendly project that bring new tourists and new jobs. This project is a, has a huge community support as demonstrated by the petition. Thank you for listening, Mia. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm done within seven minutes and 42 seconds. Thanks. Thank you. So that, that's greatly appreciated. Um, OK, so um, as I say, this is uh, this is the first time we've done that, but uh, I think uh, we would normally ask you for some answers to some questions if the committee would like to do so. So I'll hand it back to the convener and uh, if you're available to answer some questions, that would be great. Convener, over to you. OK, um, and thank you very much for your presentation, Mia, um, this morning and for being so succinct. Uh, are there any questions from members at this point?
Um, I have one, one or two questions that, that came to mind that, that from things um, <clears throat> that um, I'm not sure if, if you, Mia, or your uh, father or mother would wish to answer this, but just given you, you brought up the electricity uh, for buses, etc., it came to my mind, where where is the uh, electricity supply, water supply and sewage facilities um, and the, just generally the utilities. Um, have you any agreement signed up for these? Should should you be successful? Hello, Candina Lyle, it's uh, Fergus McCallum. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Yep. Well, that's, just. that's better. That's better. Well, that's better for me than last time. I, I unfortunately had a problem of just last time as well. Um, I missed a few seconds because we put when we pressed unmute, it said unmute, but uh, so I'm a little bit confused. I perceived the question was about electric buses, but then it, then the voice said we're unmuting. So no, you then no, no, it was it was it was just when when uh, Mia in her presentation mentioned electric buses, I just it, it suddenly jumped into my head. Where are uh, have you you have agreements with Scottish Water for your sewage? for uh, hydroelectric for your electricity and your, your water supply? Our, our architect has had conversations with Scottish Water uh, about the, to, to confirm there is a, a water supply uh, available on that site and we've had Scottish, we've had my architect spoken to, I don't have a technical term, uh, authorised suppliers of electricity and again SSE have confirmed there is adequate and again, I don't have a term, voltage, wattage, whatever the term is. So that's been confirmed as yes. Yes, I mean, we obviously don't have final and firm prices, but we, we have a, a statement that the supplies is, there is an electric supply present and there is a water supply present and there is capacity for both, if that makes sense. OK, and and for your waste water? There, there's a supply for the, I mean, my understanding again from architects, is there's a supply for wastewater. My architect tells me that's a matter that will be discussed with building building control. Um, yeah. uh, so again, the architect that that's it. That's the architect's position that there's there are acceptable utilities uh, for drinking water, uh, wastewater, electricity supply. Uh, there, there is no gas supply to it. We're not we're not using gas. Okay. We also have we also have, we also have PD panels because. My wife and daughter are particularly green, so they, they've all, they've put substantial in the plans. There are substantial PD to put the rotate panels as well. Okay, just an on uh, equally one one further question, if if I might. Uh, you stated in the, your your presentation that that you have planning consent for the two railway carriages, and then further on in that. Um, we asserted that, that 90 minutes after this meeting, uh, the council might sign off the planning consent, which implies that you don't have planning consent. Um, uh, can you maybe explain that one to me? Yeah, if you, I, if you give me one moment to get, to get my lawyer's most recent communication, I'm happy to do so. One second. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert in planning, but I'll have to do my very best. Um, one second. One second. Uh, your, your solicitor is called Andrew Thompson. Andrew Thompson, solicitor, person can Ross Council. He wrote to my solicitor on the 21st of December. Hi, Alan. Thank you for your email. I'm tied up with quite a few ma matters prior to finishing for the holidays, and I'll be returning to the office on the 10th of January. It is unlikely that I will be able to get back to you before then. Meantime, could I trouble you to type your amendment in the tax document? This would be helpful. Uh, my understanding is this is the minutes of agreement. Let me just read it. It's the agreed minutes of agreement. One second, I open it. I apologise. I'm not planning. No. It's the minutes of agreement which relate to the provision of the 12 spaces and the, and, and the payment of £23,000. So the, my solicitor and your solicitor have, a, have a, agreed formal words, but your solicitor couldn't sign them today. Um, we couldn't sign them. We couldn't. We could not sign them before Christmas because, as my daughter alluded to, uh, despite the planning application being in the name of Fergus McCallum, Esther McCallum, and Mia McCallum, the contract referred to Fergus McCallum, 
and then McCallum, which I presume is my wife, but has not got a name, and completely omitted to mention my daughter, even though the application is in it's a minute of agreement related to the provision of parking, which was part of the agreement for the planning, but despite that, your officials did not include my wife's first name or my daughter's name at all. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. It does. It just leaves me with a slight query in, in it that um, this decision was made back in April and, and these discussions were being had on the 20th of December um, as to, to who the applicant was and um, who the consent was being granted to. That does seem a bit odd, but I, I shall um, take the it, opportunity it, it, to question our very, officers it, at the appropriate it, time, Mr McCallum. It, it, it seems very, very odd to me as well. The, the, uh, I mean, what also seemed odd to me was that Joanne Ferguson wrote to my planning consultant uh, in essence, in mid December, suggesting that the planning submission was going to be late, allowed to lapse. Uh, and then, when the consultant and the lawyer, I employ, began communication, that changed to please sign this. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. It's not ideal, I would say. OK. Thank you. Any further questions? I see we have, sorry, apologies, questions. Um, Councillor Lane. Uh, thanks very much, Convener. Um, uh, first of all, uh, to thank Mia for her comprehensive, uh, both the set of slides and running through it, and uh, the, she should take uh, great pride in the way that she spoke at committee. It's not easy to come forward and do that, so uh, I'd just like to congratulate her on, on, on the way she presented her deputation. Um, uh, the, my question is really around what I think was the germane part of of uh, wh where my decision was made uh, uh, back at the previous property subcommittee is is the parking issue and uh, loss of parking. It seems to be um, maybe it's just my lack of understanding back then. But it seems to be a lot clearer to me now. Could you just uh, refresh uh, Mia or or Mr. McCallum or, or Mrs. McCallum? where you think we are with the provision of uh, parking in Pitlochry as vis-a-vis -vis, um, the, the replacing the, the park, car parking spaces that you, um, you your venture would occupy. I will let my dad answer that question for you. <coughs> Thank you. That's going to happen a lot today. Um, my, again, I apologise if I missed the question. There's, there's, there's two elements. There's a minute of agreement which comes from the planning committee. So part, part of the conditions of issuing the planning certificate is the minute agreement signed. That minute of agreement has been agreed but not signed. Well, hopefully it'll be signed this morning. Um, it says that, that we're, we're going to pay £23,000 for the provision of 12, 12 parking spaces. Uh, I, I don't know why I use the word compensation. I'm not quite sure. I'm not a lawyer. So that's part one. In practical terms, 90 minutes after the meeting ended in June, I spoke to David Little, who informed me that they had, the engineers had found eight on Riatton Road and four on Ferry Road. Um, so it's Ferry, car, Ferry Road car park. Um, I was obviously very surprised by that. Um, and my planning consultant contacted planning the next day. And my planning consultant had huge difficulty getting that put in writing. Um, she insisted that I, I was legally entitled to under planning law, and late, in it, late, late, late on the next day, uh, the verbal conversation from David was confirmed in writing that the council had requested twenty-three thousand pounds for eight spaces on Reacton Road, four spaces on Ferry Road car park, and requested twenty-three thousand pounds. And that is the minute of agreement. Obviously, it has evolved over that time, but that. Uh, my, my apologies, my wife says that's not right. It's my apologies, it's Apple Road car park. I'm so sorry. Eight on Reacton Road, uh, Reacton Road and four on Apple Road car park. My apologies. However, that's the minute of agreement. So, so that, that's my understanding. Uh, that, they, that I was first informed 90 minutes after the, um, the meeting last time verbally uh, at great difficulty uh, over, over a, almost a day of negotiation, my planner obtained it in writing the next day. And um, as I say, we're very, very hopeful that our solicitor will sign the minutes of agreement uh, with your council, with your council's officer today. And we're very, very happy that will, in fact, give us planning planning consent. I hope that helps. Yes, it does. Thank you. Uh, and then it also opens up uh, a question for officers later on. So thank you. 
Thank you. OK, thank you. Are there any further questions? There are no further questions at this point, so I'd like to thank um, Mia McCallum and Mr and Mrs McCallum for <coughs> their uh, presentation this morning. And then we'll move on to the next stage, which is uh, a deputation uh, number one. And the first deputation of, is from a Ms Hamilton and I pass back to Councillor McCall. Thank you, convener. Um, hello, um, Ms Fiona Hamilton, are you, oh. are you, can you hear us? Yes, I'm on the line. You're on the line. That's well. Welcome. Thank you very much for attending Property Sub today. Um, as I say, this is sort of news for this, but uh, again, the same things apply. Um, you'll be given ten minutes to make your deputation to the committee. Um, I'll start the clock when you're uh, when you when you next speak, and I'll, I will let you know um, when there's a minute left to go. It's around about nine minutes. I'll interrupt, just saying that there's a minute left, and if you could start wrapping up at that point. And as I say, I will start the clock when you next speak. Thank you. Thank you. I am one of the representatives of the many residents of Station Road, Reaction Road and West Lane who continue to oppose the applicant's proposal to site a restaurant within the car park. We are not opposed to railway carriages being used as a restaurant, but we are firmly opposed to the applicant's preferred location for this. The applicants are now presenting a petition as a challenge to the previous decision made by this committee in the hope they will get a second opportunity to apply for the lease. We were given no such opportunity when due to a human error on the part of PKC, we were excluded from making a deputation at the planning committee meeting. We would be reassured to know the verification processes used by the council in order to validate this petition. The applicants themselves state that the vast majority of people who have signed this petition, approximately 60%, do not even reside within the Perth and Kinross Council area. Perth and Kinross is a sizeable area and comments on social media show that significant numbers of the 40% who support this petition live <coughs> out with Pitlochry, including Aberfeldy, Kinross, Ballinluig and Blair Athol, amongst other places. No data is provided which specifically relates to Pitlochry residents. Any data which may now be presented at this meeting regarding the number of Pitlochry residents who have signed this petition must be able to stand up to due scrutiny. The applicants further state that 25% of those who have signed this petition reside abroad. Very infrequent visitors and people who live overseas cannot be afforded undue influence in relation to what happens in Pitlochry, nor can they possibly have any knowledge of parking and traffic issues within the town. We are aware that some Pitlochry residents have expressed support for this proposal. They do not live adjacent to the car park. In fact, a number of these people are very vocal about traffic and parking issues in the parts of town where they live. These same people have dominated recent community council meetings, demanding that action is taken to reduce the negative impact that traffic and parking is having on their lives. Yet they support a proposal which will have an enormous negative impact on the lives of other residents, exacerbate existing traffic and parking issues, and endanger the safety of pedestrians and other road users. These people who demonstrate astounding hypocrisy live nowhere near the car park and have no understanding of the issues. They do not set eyes in the car park from one year's end to the next. At November's community council meeting, councillors John Duff and Zandra McDeed, two of the main sponsors and supporters of this proposal, both agreed that traffic and parking are major concerns for the town. Councillor McDeed further stated that Riachan Road Car Park is a busy car park. This car park is adjacent to the only public toilets in Pitlochry. If visitors cannot gain easy access to public toilets, it's not unreasonable to assume that they will bypass Pitlochry altogether. This would have a devastating impact on the town's economy. At the planning committee meeting, Councillor John Duff stated that the toilets are absolutely vital to the economy of Pitlochry 
and nothing should be done to detract from that. Supporters of this proposal frequently post on social media saying that the majority of locals support it. The applicants have not produced any evidence to back up these statements. Just because you say it doesn't make it so. Indeed, looking at the petition data presented by the applicants, it's clear that a majority of Pitlochry residents do not support the proposal. The applicants state that 478 Perth and Kinroth residents have signed the petition. It would be useful to drill down into that figure to identify how many of those 478 live in Pitlochry. Pitlochry has a population of around 2,700, so even being exceptionally generous and taking 478 as local support, this doesn't even equate to 18% of the population. That is not a majority. I have conducted an albeit very informal survey of local residents, that is, people who actually live adjacent to the car park. I have spoken to around 60 people and found one person who did not oppose, object to the proposal. Over 98% of locals do not support this proposal. That is a majority. I therefore believe that this petition provides no new material evidence <coughs> excuse me, and should be disregarded by the committee. Thank you for listening to my deputation. Thank you very much indeed, um, Ms Hamilton. Uh, again, a very short deputation for the committee, but thank you very much indeed for that. And I'll pass you back to the convener. Thank you. Um, again, thank you very much, Ms Hamilton, um, for your succinct deputation and for clarity. Uh, are there any questions to Ms Hamilton following the, her deputation? I see no questions and Councillor Lane, I take it, um, is content. I have one question from Councillor McCall. Mm -hmm. My apologies, convener. It took a wee while for the queue to come to come up. Um, hello, thank you very much indeed for your deputation, Ms. Hamilton. Um, it was regarding your your sort of, as as you say, the sort of um, brief survey that you did of, of local residents. Um, you went around six, sixty odd people, all living within close proximity of the car park. Am I getting that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, okay. Can you give me an idea how close to the car park? Are, are we talking on the car park? Are we talking within, you know, within 50 metres, 100 metres? I'm just trying to get a feel for how far wide your ad hoc um, sort of survey went. Um, I'm speaking about people who, who do live adjacent to the car park, uh, who live on Station Road, um, Reaction Road or West Lane. Um, we are the residents who actually um, look out onto the car park. We see the traffic congestion that happens on a daily basis. We see the parking on double yellow lines, cars travelling the wrong way um, on one way streets. And I was very concerned to hear mention that eight places, replacement uh, parking spaces, have been identified for Riakin Road. That is a whole new issue for us, and that would be a, a very major concern because there are at least um, six um, entries from properties and car par uh, private car parks which come onto Riakin Road. Um, so that would be another issue for, for the residents. But it is residents who live simply adjacent to the car park who can look out of their windows and see the car park. And one of the, the residents who actually lives, her house is within the perimeter of the car park. Um, she could virtually stick her hand out from her, her back garden and touch a railway carriage in the position that it is proposed to be in. So that is how close we live to the car park. Thank you very much indeed for your answer. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lane. Uh, thanks, convener, and uh, thanks, Ms. Hammond, for, for your presentation. I was just, you, you know, the figures, you know, could be hypothetical on both sides of, of where mm -hmm. they are. We, we, we don't really know. I think you'd accept that. Um, but obviously, you're describing the car park as very busy, um, it, it's um, causing problems already. So, um, what is it actually um, that the, the 60 people who live uh, next door who are looking out onto this 
confusion, congestion, etc. What, what is their concern about uh, changing it, changing that, and uh, by having the the railway carriages or the restaurant or anything else, whoever takes over the lease, if if we're so minded to to grant the lease, what is the what what is their objection? What, how is it going to change for them? It's this car park is, as I mentioned before, adjacent to the only public toilets in, in Fitzlockery. It makes it a particularly busy um, car park. There are um, parking and traffic issues across the whole of Fitzlockery. I don't think anyone could disagree with that. And um, as we know, the £150 has already been allocated by the council for much needed addition, new and additional parking within the town. Um, that hasn't been used because no appropriate site can be found. And it's very concerning that um, a proposal could go ahead without appropriate new and additional parking being put in place. And to allow eight par parking spaces to appear on Riakin Road is a real concern for road safety. Um, this is a very, very busy part of town and lots of traffic come down here because um, it is adjacent to the public toilets. Also, the tourist coaches come in here as well and the public service buses. Um, so it is, I know the parking survey is still to be done. The council have that planned. Um, but I'm confident when that is completed, that will support the arguments that we are making that um, to reduce spaces in this car park is, is, is complete and utter nonsense and it will um, exacerbate the traffic issues within the town and have a real risk to pedestrians and other road users. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other further questions? No, I see no one has indicated anything. So, Ms. Hamilton, thank you very much for your uh, deputation this morning and thank you for answering the questions. Thank you. So we now move on to the next um, deputation and again from uh, Mr. Wood. And could I hand back to Councillor McCall? Thank you. Again, thank you, convener. Um, yes, good morning, Mr. Mark Wood. Are you able to hear us and can we hear you? Mr. Wood, are you online? Hello, Mr. Wood. Mr. Wood, are you phoning, are you phoning in? I believe it's hash six to be able to, to communicate. I hope I'm right with that, Audrey. Hello. Hello, Mr. Wood. Hi, can you hear me? We can now, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Um, right, thank you very much indeed for attending the subcommittee today. Um, the, as I've said to, to everybody so far, so sorry for repeating myself, but you'll be given 10 minutes to make your deputation to the committee. I'll be giving you um, a, a brief indication at nine minutes that there's a minute left to go if you could start wrapping up your, your uh, presentation at that time. And uh, I'll start the clock when you next speak. So over to you, please. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Mark Wood. Uh, I'm speaking as well on behalf of local residents and businesses. Uh, I am the one who has probably permission to extend uh, my restaurant. Uh, I've not actually used it. I've now actually passed by uh, and it was on my own land as well, by the way. Uh, but back in June, you were asked to review the potential of advertising this parking space for the purpose of a, of a class three restaurant and whether it was surplus to use. The Wee Choo Choo is one of three interested parties. If advertised, I'm sure much more will follow. This committee was not asked to debate the merits or popularity of one single business case. Pitlock's primary economy is built on tourism and all the businesses rely on visitors. The town's population is not big enough to sustain all these businesses. The town's shops and restaurants do not have their own parking facilities and many of the hotels in the centre of the town have limited or no parking spaces. Long-stay car parks are a vital necessity for these businesses and visitors alike. Currently, everyone who parks in the car park and the coach park next door leave the car park for various reasons, be it shopping, getting something to eat or just exploring. These visitors share the wealth they bring throughout the town. The introduction of a restaurant and takeaway 
would change the dynamic of the car park's use and that of the coach park next door. The sighting of a, such a business will encourage visitors to stay in the car park, particularly the short-stay visitors who arrive on the day-trip coaches or the people using the public to- uh, toilets. The placing of a 65-seat restaurant within a car park, irrespective of its design, will encourage people to arrive by car and take up spaces for the sole purpose of using that restaurant. This will remove up to 40 more spaces that would have been previously used by people wanting to explore the town. When people leave the car park, they experience the beauty and charm of the town. This encourages them to stay longer, spend more and have a more enjoyable time. There is a greater chance that they will return in the future after they have experienced all the town has to offer. This development will remove 12 spaces, but to accommodate the site, additional works will have to be done to the car park, which include a new exit, safety pedestrian walkway, and the relocation of two disabled bays. This will result in the permanent loss of an additional five parking spaces. It is not a perception that Pitlochry is a busy tourist town. No one business or attraction delivers this appeal. To support this and the future growth, we need to an adequate we need an adequate infrastructure to meet our visitors' needs. We cannot just consider what is happening now, but also need to consider the future. The Pitlochry community is adept at delivering new events and attractions that increase visitor numbers, similar to that achieved by the Enchanted Forest. However, this will not be possible if we don't have the infrastructure to accommodate these visitors. The We Choo Choo say there, there is only a perceived car parking issue. Without the need of a car parking survey, Councillor Duff and McDade made the council aware of these issues and their strong argument secured £150,000 of capital budget for 25 new car parking bays, which equals £6,000 per parking bay. To date, two potential sites have been identified, but dismissed. They are actively looking for alternatives, but three years on, it is proven a lot harder than originally envisaged. The first priority the council has committed to is to increase parking in Pitlockery. If the potential location of new bays have been identified, then they should be first used to deliver this commitment. However, no potential scheme has yet been properly reviewed or gained the relevant planning permission. There is a significant danger that the committee could choose to, cho- could choose to lease the land based on the assumption replacement parking spaces have been identified, only to find on review and under planning they are not suitable. The petition seeks to only demonstrate popular appeal. It does not prove this business idea is viable or that it will bring any significant new economic benefit to the town. The council's own report states that this will only displace current visitors and not provide high value jobs. The We Choo Choo have not presented to either the planning committee or this committee any tangible information or evidence as to the size of economic benefit this project will bring, if any. The global petition does not present any does not present all the facts. It misrepresents key pieces of information and does not address the questions the committee were asked to review. It does not identify how many respondents were from Pick Lockery or, or does it demonstrate local community support? And over 300 of the respondents don't even live in the UK. A simple vote of support does not constitute a new visitor. Given the level of marketing undertaken to promote this petition, I would be very disappointed with the outcome. The Long Stay Car Park is a valuable resource for the residents, visitors and pit lockers economy. I commend that the committee uphold their original majority decision to retain the car park for the sole purpose of its design that it was designed for. I'd like to pose a quick question to the committee. And whilst we oppose that this development, well, you know, whilst we oppose that any development takes place on this land, uh, this is specific to the We Choo Choo. The We Choo Choo was secretly negotiating to lease land from Network Rail, who are, in essence, a government body. 
They took the commercial decision during these negotiations to purchase two carriages before they had secured the land. Where is the petition, the marketing campaign, the newspaper articles against Network Rail? Why do you think they feel it has been appropriate to portray the council so poorly and accuse them of wrongdoing when you have only been following your agreed process? The council are, are the same as any other landlord. So what is it that makes this commercial enterprise feel that they are entitled to this land and their business is more important than other businesses in pit lockery that benefit from the car park? Saying they will attract new visitors is simply not enough. All the businesses actively try to attract new visitors and we work together through the pit lockery partnership. The Enchanted Forest would not be here today if, you, if it was not for the business community working together. The Athol Palace recently ran a long TV campaign inviting visitors to Pit Lockery. I, ourselves, my wife and I, who own two shops, we have never spent a penny advertising, yet my, Christmas, my wife's Christmas shop features in travel guides and blogs all over Europe. People regularly cite that they have made a special trip to Pit Lockery to visit her shop, and the amount of annual people who return to her shop each year is amazing. Yet this is not at the detriment of other businesses around her. She doesn't need to take 17 parking bays away from these businesses to bring new customers to the town. But if they don't have anything anywhere to park, will they come in the future? So why is this commercial enterprise more important? And how will you justify giving them preferential council support above all the other businesses in Fit Lockery? And one final note, I'm just, you know, we weren't advised of the uh, parking bays in Riacan Road, to be told that they're going to replace uh, 12 parking bays at the cost of £23,000 when the council are going to have to spend £150,000 or uh, £6,000 per day on other car parking seems like they're getting a very, very cheap deal. A car, a car parking bay is £6,000 according to your, uh, uh, your own estimates. So they should be paying at least £72,000 to replace this. Does this mean that they're going to get some cheap on-road parking? Is the parking like for like? Uh, is it long-stay parking that we're going to be replacing this with? If it's on-street parking, that's got a 30-minute limit. And that, so that concludes my deputation. Well, thank you very much. I was just about to say that was nine minutes, but um, you've, you've rounded it up. So thank you very much indeed, Mr Wood, and I'll pass you back to the convener. Convener, you're on mute. Apologies. Um, <laughs> sorry, it, uh, it happens and that's only the first time this year, um, but I'm sure it'll happen again. So one, thank you very much, Mr Wood, for your deputation and thank you, Councillor McCall, for your assistance. Um, do we have any questions for Mr Wood at this time? We have no questions coming up in the chat box. Is there anyone wishes to interject verbally if they can't get in the chat? Convener, I, I've put a question up in the chat, but it's maybe not coming through yet. It, it hasn't come through. It's just come through now, Councillor Lane, as ever, slightly delayed, but thank you very much. Carry on. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Convener, and thank uh, you, Mr Wood, for your presentation. Uh, so I, my understanding from your uh, deputation there, Mr Wood, is that you're against any, uh, this being put out to uh, at least for, as it would have been if we just were so minded, for any business um, to uh, be cited on this area. It's not particularly uh, the, the way you choose, it's just any any uh, business at all. No, I totally agree. Yes. Absolutely any business. Uh, this car park supports all the businesses in the town. I'd quite happily see the Wee Choo Choo located somewhere else. Uh, if it was on the network rail land, I wouldn't be bothered. Uh, if it was at the back of the uh, uh, toilets down by Burnside, that would be fine. There's a site uh, on Ferry Road car park. There's some land at the side of there. You're on the opposite side of the carriageway. Uh, there, there are other places it could have been. Uh, I, I'm just opposed to anywhere. OK, I take it anywhere within the car park. That's what you, yeah, you sorry, yeah, yeah, anywhere but the car park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, 
Uh, does that answer your question, Councillor Lane? Yes, yeah, sort of. Thank you. OK, thank you. Any further questions for Mr Wood? Um, I don't see any. So thank you very much again, Mr Wood, for your deputation this morning. And <coughs> uh, we'll move on to the next uh, part here. Someone is still speaking. I'm not sure if it's Mr Wood who's still there, but um, we move, now move on to the report and I'd ask David Littlejohn if he would like to introduce the report for us this morning. David. Thanks uh, very much, convener. Um, the, the report is simply a, a summary um, of the uh, deputation and, and sets out uh, um, some of the, uh, the issues that we identified in uh, working through the deputation. So in, in essence, um, it, uh, it, um, it, it just talks through the, um, the key points, I think seeking some clarification and providing some clarification um, in relation to the, the petition, particularly around the, the clarifying the, the, the status of the, uh, of, of the planning application at this moment in, in time, factually. Um, the report um, doesn't make a recommendation to the committee. It simply asks the committee to note um, a, a number of, of, of matters that the committee would like to uh, consider in reaching a decision whether or not to um, accept the, the premise of the, 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 permission, the, the, the petition, which would be to revisit uh, the decision of the committee not to lease this car park for any commercial use. OK, thank you very much. Now I'm anticipating a few questions coming in and um, I believe Councillor Lane was the last question, so we'll go to Councillor Wilson. Thanks, Karina, and thanks um, for the report, Mr Littlejohn. On page nine of our papers, item 13, says that the time of writing the legal agreement has not been concluded. Um, the deputations referred to that. Uh, could we have an update, please, on on whether it has progress has been made on that? Mr. McCallum indicated there had been, but I'd like to hear from the officer point of view wh where we are with that, please. I, th I think the, the position, Councillor Wilson, is exactly as Mr. McCallum indicated it. Um, uh, it. It has moved on, I guess, since this report was written um, earlier in December. I understand the draft minute of agreement um, is now uh, in, in essence agreed, um, uh, but not yet signed. But uh, Mr. Fogg might be able to give a more updated position than than I can. It's a you know, matter between two sets of, of lawyers at this point in time. Mr. Fogg. Yes, yes, convener. Um, I did speak to my uh, team member Andrew Thompson this morning and confirmed the position was as I understood. A draft was issued to Mr McCallum's solicitors in June of last year. Um, it was returned on or about the 20th of December uh, with various revisals. Uh, Andrew simply acknowledged receipt and said he would be taking instructions and reverting to them as soon as he could. Uh, and he confirmed to me this morning his first day back uh, from the Christmas break that that's that's the case. So we have um, a working draft at the moment uh, which is in the process of being agreed. Uh, once it had been agreed, it would then fall to be signed by both the applicant and by a proper office of the council and it then would then become a concluded agreement allowing the planning consent to be issued. Uh, I have no reason to believe there's any insurmountable difficulties. Um, I don't know why it took six months to come back. Uh, to us uh, at the end of the, the year, but um, nonetheless, it does look now as, as if it's back on track uh, and it is being progressed. Okay, uh, Can I, just for clarification, Councillor Wilson, to me. So, <clears throat> so what we're saying is that, that we issued conditions in uh, some time ago, if you like, and the applicant came back with um, what he indicated was some confusion around the titles in uh, the conditions that were issued uh, initially, and he's updated the titles that the application would apply to. Other than that, there is no material difference between the conditions that we have 
uh, put out in the letter in June and the revised conditions that, to use your term, that were resubmitted to us in December. Is that correct? Yeah, that's going a bit further than I, I would be able to do. I've got no reason to uh, doubt what Mr McCallum said, that the uh, identity of the parties needed to be corrected, but um, I, I'm not able to say that that was the only issue. It was described to me very quickly by Andrew uh, um, before Christmas there that there were a number of revisals, so it wouldn't surprise me uh, if it's the case that his solicitor was looking to renegotiate some of the uh, provisions on which the um, uh, the, the agreement for uh, alternative parking places in the town uh, would, would proceed and this all being contingent on a successful lease being entered into. Um, I don't know, I'm not directly involved in the negotiation, but I, I, I think it'd be wrong to say that that was the only issue. I think there are a number of other matters uh, on which uh, further instructions will be required from our colleagues in planning, but I'm not directly involved in that negotiation, so I can't be any more specific than that. OK, I'll leave that. Councillor Wilson, sorry to interrupt. No. Supplementary, please, convener. Yes, um, absolutely. I'm uh, correct then in thinking that the facts are that the response took six months um, from, from the applicant. Um, and come, is that out of time with the original planning condition? Convener, um, it, it was longer than we had hoped. Uh, we, we did try to um, uh, encourage a fast response, uh, but there wasn't a... We, the, the recommendation uh, to the planning committee had been to refuse the application. Um, the standard wording, as David... Jeff, you've gone on mute. My apologies. Mr Fogg, sorry. Sorry. Where an application is, is uh, recommended for approval, um, but subject to Section 75, it's normal to have a um, standard wording that says we would look to have the agreement concluded more or less within four months, and if we're unable to do that, we reserve the right to have it uh, treat it as a deemed refusal under delegated powers. This was a different case because the recommendation had been one of refusal, so there wasn't any uh, provision made in the report for not entering into the necessary agreement within a uh, requisite period of time. So we just tried to be reasonable and uh, towards the end of the year we were starting to express some concern that it wasn't progressing uh, as swiftly as we thought maybe uh, it could have, but there were no conditions imposed saying it shall be concluded within a particular period. It was just left to uh, planning and legal to try and progress it on behalf of the committee, uh, which is what we, we duly did. However, maybe I would say this is really a matter for the planning committee rather than the property subcommittee, but it does explain perhaps why a planning permission as such has not yet been uh, issued by the, the council's planning authority. Um, it's yes. still a work in progress. Uh, nothing that I'm aware of suggests to me that that can't happen. It just hasn't happened to date. Uh, Mr Fogg, I'm grateful for your response and convener. I, I'm simply asking the question because this is part of the report that we were given today. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yep, yeah, and I'm aware that the, the, the issues seem to conflate uh, regularly. Councillor Lane. Uh, thank you, convener. Um, a lot has been raised sort of in deputations and uh, the um, correspondence we've had probably all had from uh, interested parties uh, and I did not sit on the planning development committee. I know that some members here have, so they will they will not uh, know exactly um, what was talked through. So I was just to lay my concerns about um, all the road safety aspects, etc. and possibilities of um, uh, utilities, etc. Were would would they not have been discussed uh, at the planning committee, and would that not be all 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 these issues, um, uh, roads, etc. Would be involved in in that in that committee rather than this one? And and obviously because although it was not recommended for uh, approval by officers, it has been approved by the committee. So I take it all these issues have already been addressed. Is that correct or not? Uh, Councillor Lane, I'll get. Uh Mr. Fogg to address that once his mute button goes off. OK, thanks. Ye yes, Kavina. Um, uh, um, it may be that David want, would want to come into on this too, but no, those uh, matters um, relating to the enabling or accommodation works of the car park were not um, considered by the 
uh, planning committee. It was not seen as part of the application. The planning application was a quite a narrow red line, just really of the land required for the uh, carriages. It was explained to the uh, planning and development management committee that there would necessarily have to be quite substantial and quite expensive um, uh, enabling works to the car park um, that had not been fully uh, considered by um, Rhodes colleagues uh, Butterworth's team that would be um, dealt with at a later date and it was seen that that was more a matter for this committee actually because these would have to be catered for uh, through um, negotiations for the, the lease uh, as opposed to the planning consent which was really more concerned about the principle of the change of use so none of those uh, detailed matters about um, alternative parking bays and um, the uh, alternative stationing of the electric vehicles, uh, the probable need for a new egress onto Riachan Road, uh, revised lighting and signage. That's all work that was, will still have to be done at a later date. Uh, it's not been uh, considered by, by planning at all. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, if you don't mind, can we not just cont continue? So although on. Yep. All, all, all of these issues would be taken care of, if, if we were reminded to give a lease to anybody and it would apply to uh, whatever uh, business uh, was cited in, in, in that car park. That, that, the lease would take care of it, not this committee. That would be the, the officers drawing up the lease rather than the committee getting involved in it. Well, uh, I think it would be an operational matter for um, officers to decide what the necessary uh, um, road uh, and car parking safety uh, issues and redesign works uh, entailed uh, and yes it would need to be um, uh, provided for uh, as a condition of the lease uh, and yes that would apply to whoever uh, if the committee resolved to, to market it and uh, whoever was the uh, preferred bidder uh, he or she would be responsible for meeting those quite substantial costs and that's quite separate from uh, the offsetting of uh, car parking within the town that Mr uh, McCallum has spoken of this morning. But that will apply to any 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 person, whoever it may be, uh, were there to be a, a change of use in the car park. OK, thanks. Uh, would you uh, indulge me with a second question, uh, convener? Um, I'm happy to indulge you, Councillor Lane, with a third question. <laughs> yeah, gentlemen, thank you. Um, so um, just to clarify in my own mind, uh, uh, Jeff, I don't know if you'll come back. You, you said that um, uh, the the agreement, the minutes agreement. There's, you didn't think there was anything insurmountable there that um, that, that could not be negotiated between uh, both sets of uh, solicitors, uh, the legal team uh, of Mia McCallum and the legal team at uh, at the council. So. Um, understand obviously so that could be negotiated down and also any uh, issues of safety etc and improvements to the road could be incorporated in the lease. Um, the question I have for uh, uh, David is, David Little John, um, is I'm confused and on the timing of this 90 minutes uh, after the the last committee um, where it became or apparently became apparent that there were there had been work done and there'd been sites identified. Could you give me some clarity on that, David, please? Yeah, I, I can do as, in, in as much as I can, Councillor. I don't think the, the 90 minutes is is is, is, is particularly relevant. Um, I, I spoke to Mr. McCallum after the last committee and in, indicated that it looked like we would have been able to find um, the, the 12 spaces. And I think actually that information was shared by Mark Butterworth um, to two committee members within the committee. At the time, I didn't think it was particularly relevant because the committee was actually considering the principle of leasing the car park for a class three business use. It wasn't specifically looking at 12 spaces, the loss of 12 spaces that were a direct consequence of the, the, the wee choo choo uh, application. But I do appreciate, and as we've alluded to this morning, the two issues between the specific requirements as a consequence of the planning consent and the wider principles about the use of the car park for commercial uses have become uh, uh, conflated and it is sometimes quite difficult to to, to pick the the, the the two apart but 
I think officers have concluded it is likely that we can find, um, and we've ind indicated the two streets that it might, it might be possible to find um, the 12 spaces for specifically relating to the, to the loss of spaces relating to the, um, the, the, the WeChu Chu proposal. Clearly, if any other proposal came forward, if the committee's minded to, to lease the car park, um, they would all have to be considered in their own merits. Um, they may require less or, 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 or more spaces or, or, or none. You know, all of this is hypothetical because at the moment there's a planning permission for one use and there's a decision as it stands not to lease the car park for a commercial use. So all of that would need to come out in the wash again if a decision was 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 taken to the, the contrary about the, the use of the car park. So it is a confusing position, Councillor Lane, but um, the reality is I think we can find 12 spaces uh, and there's a separate issue about the wider um, provision of additional sp uh, spaces in the town should land uh, be identified for that. But uh, this has been a very difficult um, uh, situation for, for, for everyone, not least the McCallum family, but also council officers um, and, and, and trying to, to, to take this forward. Thank you. OK, thank you. Can I can I just ask um, possibly Mr Fogg for clarification just and, and this is just to, to keep it um, simple. The 12 car parking uh, sites relocation, there was an indicative sum of 23,000 um, indicated at that point, which may be incurred in that relocation. According to Mr Wood, um, that, that was cheaper than the, the 6,000 per site for the other ones. But what it didn't didn't address with with these comments around the 12 bar car parking sites is the possibility of more substantial costs to be incurred with the reconfiguration of the car park, etc. And these would still be part of the planning conditions. Would that be correct or the lease conditions? Just I'm just for clarification in my mind. Thank you, Mr. Fogg. The, the lease conditions, uh, convener, no, not the planning conditions. Uh, the reconfiguration of the car park um, consequential upon um, the way Choo Choo or any other proposal uh, would have to be uh, progressed through through the, the lease because the, the planning application didn't go into that and wasn't provided for. There were no planning conditions as such um, okay. advanced by the committee, so it would have to be taken care of through the through any lease. OK, so so the reconfiguration of the car park or, or potentially a new entrance on that <coughs> might have substantially higher costs involved than, than the relocation of 12 car parking spaces, which if some of them are onto Riachan Road might be required planning consent in their own right, etc. Is that correct in both counts? It's um, it, it, it's more the remit of uh, Mark Butterworth and his team, but uh, the information that was shared with me last year was that the reconfiguration of the car park will, will be very substantially more expensive than the money that's being secured through the planning agreement for the planning consent. Um, we got, I think, very indicative costs in the order of £80,000 or so um, once you start looking at um, the new egress, um, the electric vehicle uh, reciting the disabled parking, the lighting columns, etc. It will be a much, much greater uh, cost that the uh, any tenant would have to bear than uh, providing for alternative parking. Yes. If I could perhaps add to that, Councillor Lyle. Yes, the, the, the original report to the property subcommittee um, back in, in, in June last year set that out. So it gave the background, you know, recognising that the proposal had received planning permission. It then went on to identify what those additional costs might be, and that was at least £80,000 plus the bond for reinstatement, etc. The report then, of course, went on to recommend because of the wider interest in the site, the best course of action would be to, to, to market the site generally rather than just focus on the specific um, application. Um, but, but yes, those costs are all set out for members in the original um, property subcommittee report. Yeah, just to clarify that. Thank you. Councillor McEwen. Thank you, Convener. At the meeting in June, I specifically asked about car parking and was told there was no information available about the from the council anyway about how 
much parking there was available in Pit Lockery and whether all the car parks in Pit Lockery are full or whether some of the car parks in Pit Lockery constantly remain half empty and it's just there's one car park that's actually very busy because it's very near the, the city centre. Uh, and the answers I got then were that we had no information because we had not done a parking survey and I heard from residents in their submissions today that that parking survey still hasn't been conducted, which isn't a surprise given the, the COVID situation we're currently in. Uh, would it be fair to say that information regarding parking, regarding these extra spaces, where they could be situated, has come to light after our decision in June? And actually, there is no committee of this council has ever made a decision on leasing of the car park based on all the information. Is that a fair statement given that what I've said? Uh, Mr Fogg's frozen at the moment, Councillor McEwen, and I'm sure he'll be able to answer you more fully when he comes in. Uh, I mean, it is a fact that oh, all information is evolving. Sorry, uh, Mr Fogg. Uh, convener, um, yeah, uh, uh, momentarily froze. I think I'm back now. Um, I, I think I agree with Councillor McEwen to a point, um, but it's also the case that the car parking survey, as he stated, has not been completed. I think that work is scheduled to be completed by summer next year. So yes, as time goes on, position changes, there is new information. But as at today's date, we the, the, the survey work uh, that the uh, community service has uh, scheduled has not been completed. It was delayed because of the pandemic. I think some work will be is expected to be received by February and the full report by uh, next summer. So um, it will be a developing picture and that will give a more accurate account of the parking demands in the town once it's available. OK, thank you. I'm just um, I know in the chat that the Brian Cargill may come in with a, an answer on the car parking survey, etc. Thank you, convener. Um, yes, the, the current position is um, we have went through the lengthy procurement process and we now have a consultant so we're about to appoint and the intention is to, to carry out a survey as, as, as quickly as we possibly can, but also to follow that up uh, to get clearly a busier time of the year. Um, traffic patterns are, are, are slightly different from the norm. Everything's slightly different from the norm just now, but the intention is to, to carry out a survey as soon as possible and follow that up with a, a further survey at a later point when in a busier part of the year. OK, no, I, yeah, given those answers, I still have the point that the extra 12 car parking spaces was not information made available to this committee in June when we last made our decision. Uh, and that seems to be, I just want to clarify that that's a, a fact and not just an opinion. Uh, and that information about these extra spaces that would be needed, the 12 spaces, uh, was information that could have been given to the committee at the time, but for some reason wasn't. No, I, I take your point. Um, I mean, uh, the, the, quite, the point is that the, the 12 car parking spaces, I think um, from my perspective, would only be relevant to the application from the wee choo choo train and other applications may have a different number. Of it. But your your point is is made, uh, Councillor McEwen, that that potential information of of the variation of number of car parking spaces was not highlighted as a result of the planning consent, but it wasn't really germane to the question that was being asked of the property subcommittee. Is my view, Mr. Fogg may wish to clarify. No. I have nothing further to add, convener. Um, the, as David Littlejohn has said to you, that the 12 was specific to Mr McCallum's own proposal, but as the June committee was being asked to, um, whether it was to agree to market the, the, the site for a class three business use, and it couldn't be known how many parking spaces might be required of whatever that particular, the, the, the most appropriate use or the preferred use would be. The fact that we knew what Mr uh, McCallum's uh, proposal was equated to wasn't directly germane to the, the matter principle that the property subcommittee was being asked to determine on that day. OK. Thank you. Have you a supplementary, Councillor McEwen? Uh, no, not at this time, thank you. 
Thank you. David Littlejohn, do you wish to make any comment just now or will I move on to the next question? No, Councillor nothing. Lane. Councillor Lane. Uh, sorry, 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 convener. Councillor uh, McCall was before me actually because. All right. Uh, oh, well, my apologies. I, I, I see that now. Councillor McCall. That's OK, I'm perfectly happy to wait patiently. Um, thank you, convener. Um, I'm, I've got two questions, if I if I may, and they're basically coming from the questions and bits and pieces that have, that have been mentioned so far. Um, Mr Wood uh, made a very valid point in his deputation that um, the 32,000 for parking spaces that we've been discussing uh, as well, you wanted to know if they were like for like. Now, my understanding from the, the discussion so far is that we are taking car parking long um, long stay car parking spaces in a car park and we are now looking to possibly if this moved in that direction to recite them on the road um, so the question very basically is are they like for like parking spaces that are we are discussing that would be mr cargill thanks convener and um, thanks councillor um it's probably it, it probably is quite simple to break it down that the, the 150,000 that was identified um, to provide additional car parking in Pit Lockery was really just a, a rough figure um, that was pulled together based on the cost of, of, of previous car park provision, and that would be construction costs. There were also land costs or, or, or land purchase costs would be included in that. So that to, to build a new car park, the costs are clearly quite significantly higher. Um, when we were asked to identify, could we try and find 12 spaces in Pit Lockery, um, the, the challenge to the, to the officers was to see where there was potential. Now, it really was always just potential 12 spaces. Some of these are on street, and clearly the cost of providing a parking space on street is significantly lower than having to, to build a new car park. Um, one of the locations at, Riach, at, at sorry, Arthur Road car park was actually in a soft landscaped area, so there would be some costs involved there. So the 23,000, again, was a rough estimate at what would, the cost would be to provide potentially 12 new spaces if we were needed to do so. Um, the 150,000, if you break that down into 25, was, was roughly £6,000 per space. That's just a very rough costing again to identify what the cost would be for a new build. So there's there's two different scenarios there. Okay. My my apologies, convener. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Cargill. I'm coming back to you because your answer was perfect from an officer's point of view, and I totally get it. I'm coming from a resident's point of view. Um, a resident will look at a parking space in a car park uh, somewhere that is slightly more secure. Um, it has a bay. It may have a a, a free period of time for for a couple of hours or, or whatever, and, and a parking space on a road um, will be seen entirely differently. It will be something where there are cars going by. It will be um, somewhere where people are more likely to pop into a space for 15, 20 minutes. There may be a free 15 minute um, process on it and there may be different charges. So um, my apologies for not being clear in my question. I was trying to ask whether from a resident's perspective or from a car user's perspective, are we talking about replacing car park car parking spaces with a like for like situation or are we talking about an entirely different type of car parking space? Mr. Cargo again. Yep. You're on mute. Apologies. Um, thanks, Councillor, for that clarification. I think you're absolutely correct then in that it isn't a like for like if we are taking 12 spaces out of the Aachen Road car park and providing what would be eight spaces on street out of the 12. I think the further four at Arthur Road car park could be considered as being like for like, um, albeit at a different location. Um, so you're absolutely correct. I think in our what was a really um, a, a short survey to find to identify these 12 spaces. We were approached by residents who had who did raise their concerns with us. 
um, about the on street element of it. So I think the, the, the short answer to your question is yes, it's, it's not a like for like um, swap 12 spaces within a car park for 12 spaces outside a car park. OK, thank you very much. And um, convener, if I may, my second question. Um, I'm, I'm going to the reconfiguration of the car park and in some of the information that was sent to us, um, there was uh, comments, quite, quite a few comments about no further cost to the taxpayer, um, but obviously the uh, reconfiguration of the car park. So I just want clarity. Are we saying that the approximate cost, and I'm not holding everybody to it, of, of 80,000, is something that would be attached to the lease and would be the requirement if we were minded to lease out the space would be the requirement for whoever took that off to pay that cost or are we talking about this work having to be done at cost to the taxpayer that would be then added to the cost of the lease ongoing month on month year on year and dependent on the fact that that lease was Ongoing. I hope that sent that question made sense. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm uh, not really the person to answer that because it's a, a commercial decision. But I would be um, Mr. Littlejohn. Yeah, I, I, I mean, again, this is hypothetical. But but if the council did decide to offer uh, a lease, ultimately. For for this particular use that, that, that we choose to, then these costs would have to be borne and paid up front effectively by uh, the, the applicant as well. The lease value, the annual lease, the ground rent is actually fairly small because it's it, it's a very small piece of ground, so it's, it's literal commercial value, it's rentable value is is, is small. The bigger cost is is uh, is all these works that would need to be done up front. And they would need to be paid, um, you know, as as a capital contribution um, at, at the commencement of the lease, because the council would require to make that expenditure in order to make the car park safe, um, and therefore would require the cash. So it, would, it wouldn't be rentalised over a long period of time. If that's maybe um, the the other way of doing it. Yes, thank you very much indeed. And my apologies for hypothetical questions, but I, I wanted to ask them because there has been raised a couple of times in this committee that we were not informed of hypothetical situations in the previous committee that would have maybe had an effect on our decision making. So I just wanted to make sure that everything had, had been aired. So thank you very much and apologies for the hypotheticals. No, uh, thank you very much. And just as a matter of clarification, um, it has come to my attention previously that, that whatever that cost would be, Mr. McCallum has indicated that he's uh, willing to pay that cost in full, and I believe he's uh, done that in writing. So I then move on to the next question, Councillor Lane. Uh, thanks uh, again, convener. Um, uh, I have to, you, you know, disagree uh, and put from my perspective, my um, opinion back in uh, June was uh, coloured by not knowing about the car parking spaces being available and it may have been a choice and I know that you've said that that didn't uh, influence your decision in any way. So I've got two two questions on car parking spaces. Um, if we didn't know it was going to be the, the, the choo-choo, the wee choo-choo that was going to be taking, uh, getting a lease because we're going to be putting out the, the recommendation by officers to put the lease out uh, for MD, who, who was it asked the, to look at for 12 spaces, which was exactly what's required for the wee choo-choo, and why were they not just looking for how many spaces there were? So it was just to see who I'd asked, actually asked uh, Mr Kirgill and his team to to provide, uh, to see if we could provide 12 spaces. And the other thing is, th this money was put in the budget in 2018, 150,000, and we're now four years later, and there's not been a traffic survey. So I was just wondering why the money, if it was obviously put in, I remember it quite well, it's put in because of a desperate need, and I'm not disputing there's a need, possibly, I don't know, because there's no traffic survey, for extra parking in Pit Lockery. And I'm just wondering why, um, this money sat has sat in the budget for four years without even a parking survey being done. OK, two two questions. Um, I suspect that the 12 spaces and, and now Mr Cargill may or Mr Littlejohn uh, may both come in with an answer, but I suspect it is related to the planning application that was approved. But uh, David Littlejohn first. 
Sorry. Yeah, ab ab absolutely, Councillor Lyle. The, the 12 spaces is a direct uh, compensation for the loss of spaces uh, relating to the planning application. So that, that's where that came from. It was a, a specific requirement, um, as we've discussed earlier, um, uh, to uh, enter into a legal agreement to provide compensation for 12 spaces, which would be lost um, uh, if, if the planning consent was granted. So that's where the 12 came from. It had nothing to do with um, the wider leasing of the car park or, or any other uh, lease of uh, any other lease. Um, I think Brian can probably say a little bit more about the uh, the, 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 the 150,000 pounds in the parking survey. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, David. Uh, thanks, convener again, and thanks, council, for the question. Um, I think my, my recollection is that the hundred and fifty thousand, um, when that was put into the to the um, the capital budget to provide us additional car parking input, Aubrey, I think there was a site uh, that was available, but, but I think that was was actually uh, purchased commercially by a developer, and so that site was no longer um, uh, available for the council to consider for parking. Um, the, the parking survey itself, again, is, is testing my powers of recollection here, but uh, at the time our council officer or one of our council officers was tasked with taking that forward. Um, unfortunately, he moved on uh, to another post. Um, I think he had worked hard to try and get local agreement with the members for the scope of the survey um, to, to, to carry it out, so to make sure that we covered all the, the, the streets and the areas that the, 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 the local community would consider were available for parking. That then sat because we didn't have the resources to deliver that, and then lo and behold, COVID came along and we we'll find ourselves, which seems to be uh, uh, an extraordinary amount of time since we were asked to do the survey. Um, we, we were tasked earlier on or, or in the mid last year to carry out the survey. We went through the procurement process and we're now at the stage where we have a consultant and it's ready to go with it. So um, so that's probably a, a timeline of, of, of how we arrived at, at, at today's date. Thank you. Uh, I just have to say, Katrina, it is an extraordinary and ordinate time for 150,000 in a budget. That's um, normally when uh, money is put in a capital budget or a budget, there is a business case looked at it uh, pretty promptly. Um, and maybe if it had been uh, pushed forward, um, um, we might not have been in this position where uh, we'd be arguing over 12 spaces. Um, again, yeah, thank you for your point. Again, we're just uh, everything seems to get conflated in debates ar around this. Uh, and. I'm, I'm content that Mr. Cargill's response is that we're proceeding with the car parking survey as quickly as possible. And I also regret that we haven't had it done more quickly, but there have been, uh, as you're aware, circumstances, uh, the majority of which have been well beyond our control. Anyway, Councillor Shires. Thank you, convener. My question's more general. I and it's about the principle of if we were minded and we weren't minded previously, if we if we were minded to um, move towards marketing the site for whatever purpose um, on, on a, a was it a class three, would we be opening ourselves up that we could then have applications in other car parks um, across Parthink and Ross? And from a policy point of view, do we have anything that might offer us um, you know, protection for you know, some bigger uh, developers that might come in wanting to? I, I can't think of you know, an example of, of what kind of um, opportunity somebody might see in a car park, but it's more about the sort of general policy and how we might um, provide protection on car parking, which you know I, I can only think about in, in Blagowry is you know very valuable to to the community and to businesses in the town. So it was more on the the sort of wider policy agenda. Please, I think probably one for you, Mr. Fogg. Mr. Fogg. Um. It possibly straddles myself and uh, David Littlejohn. Uh, encourage you, convener, to, to hear from him as well. Um, we don't have a policy as such in relation to our use of car parking, uh, but as a, my understanding is that the, uh, the established practice is that they have not been um, made available for uh, business use uh, proposals such as this. 
Um, uh, there's a degree of speculation uh, invited in Councillor Shire's question, uh, but I think it's not unreasonable to suppose that were this um, car park to be uh, made available for a class three business use, it does increase the possibility or, or probability that similar requests will come forward elsewhere within the area of Perth and Kinross for comparable proposals. That doesn't mean to say the committee would uh, necessarily refuse it outright, but it is a risk and concern that the committee would, this committee would be expected to weigh up in determining how it wants to go forward uh, and whether how it feels about the scenario of um, comparable uses being made of other car parks uh, across the area. I don't know if David wants to add to that. No, no, nothing specifically. I mean, there's, there's no planning policy that either supports or precludes uh, the, the use of, of um, designated car parks for other permanent uses. It would come down to the decision of whoever the owner was, whether that's the council or a, or a third party, and whether or not that use then uh, secured um, an appropriate planning consent, but there's certainly no policy basis. OK, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? I don't like to miss out the opportunity um, for there. And <coughs> if we don't, I see that uh, Councillor Bailey wishes to make uh, a motion or amendment in the chat box. But I, it was just to say that I am happy to bring forward a motion um, at the moment, and, and Councillor Bailey, if you're happy to, to move an amendment um, shortly, that would be fine. Um, for my um, motion, uh, I would like to move that, that we um, leave the decision um, of the committee uh, of the 14th of June 2021 not to lease uh, Riachen Car Park for a commercial use. And um, that is the extent of my motion. We have uh, exhausted, uh, I think, the arguments this morning uh, uh, for the case. And, and my, uh, I would reiterate this is nothing to do with uh, Mr and Mrs McCallum uh, and Mia McCallum's petition this morning. This is really a matter of principle on my part that we should not be <coughs> leasing uh, Council car parks for commercial use. I'm happy to move that motion. Do I have a seconder? Happy to second, um, convener. And, and in that seconding, I'm just going to add a few words. Um, again, it, to me, it comes down to a matter of principle. Um, and, and that's that's the only point really uh, in front of me right now. Um, I think I'm the only councillor um, that's current on this committee who had a um, council car park used for um, a couple of spaces used for something uh, separate. In, in Creef, we had uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland's roof fall in, and for a very short period of time, they had a porta cabin in a car park. Um, the actual port of carbon itself being a short amount of time being for a small um, issue was really not too much of an, a problem except for the and, and the shut at five o'clock. But that's where the similarities kind of, of, of meet. After that, we ended up with people milling around. We ended up with cars parking in the wrong place. We ended up with people nipping into the bank. So they had kind of abandoned their car in the car park. The issues of having a building in a car park um, for a, a commercial use of some sort, we can't know and even legislate in, in any way for what people will do and won't do. They will treat the, the building similarly to how they would treat it. We could end up with people parking just adjacent to it because somebody's coming out from the restaurant. There are many what ifs that unfortunately cannot be answered. So for me, I'm looking at this very simply as a matter of principle. I thought it was wrong when the Bank of Scotland, the Royal Bank of Scotland was in the car park, and I have issues with this too. This isn't because of the wee choo choo, this isn't for any business that might be coming forward. It's not about the business itself. We have seen the business case, we've seen the support behind it. The business is not up for question here. What is up for question is whether we should continue to have like, leased out space in our car parks for commercial use. And on principle, I do not think that is a good idea, and therefore I will be seconding the motion. Thank you very much. Councillor McEwen. The 
petition asked us to consider we make a decision on re-looking at this. It doesn't ask us to re-look at it at this meeting, but that appears to be what your motion is, convener, is to actually take the petition and actually reassess the application itself, and then obviously sub subsequently to your motion that is actually to, to, re to reject it again. That isn't what I felt we were here to do today, that we were here to assess whether this should be looked at again. And that's the way that I've looked at as a member of this committee. Uh, hence the questions I asked officers regarding uh, information that came to light after our previous committee, uh, information that that swayed how I decided. I think the amendment at the last committee was to get, gather further information and not to make a decision. Uh, so I'm quite confused about where we're going with this, other than getting railroaded into making a decision again. OK, I, I, I take your point on, but I, I think from, from my perspective, um, <coughs> what, what the committee is, is asked to do today is to consider the pe petition and then to consider whether we wish to um, amend, if you like, our decision of the 14th of June 21 and reconsider our decision at a future meeting. My my view is that we do not reconsider that and, and that we agree to abide by our decision of the uh, 14th of June 21. Councillor Bale. Oh, was that me? Sorry, convener. Yes, sorry. Great, sorry. Someone spoke at the same time as you. Um, apologies. So, um, thank you, convener. Um, I'd like to also thank Mia and the other deputies we heard earlier for taking the time and getting involved in our local democracy. It's great to hear such energy in this virtual chamber today. I'm glad this matter is getting a second hearing. Rest assured, I don't take the out of county and out of country signatories on the petition as evidence that we should reconsider, but I do take it as evidence that this is an attraction that will attract people from our area to our area from far around. That has to be a good thing and it sets it apart from other things that may have um, applied to work in our car parks in the past. My thoughts on the petition and my reasoning for, for reconsidering are as follows. Firstly, this is a unique offer with a national and some international appeal within its niche. It doesn't set any kind of precedent for burger trailers to pop up and trade from car parks across the piece. Secondly, the replacement car parking will be identified and provided before any development happens, assuming, of course, that this one wins the competitive process. It's a condition of the planning permission. I can understand that the agreement for the car parking maybe wasn't progressed very swiftly because this committee declined to lease the ground. Why, therefore, would the McCallums want to incur legal fees to negotiate an agreement with us if they have no guarantee that we would go ahead and lease the ground in response? Those people living with or with businesses near to this site are already in a location that's very close to a railway station, a coach park, public toilets, numerous restaurants and takeaways and a car park. Although this would have been more a consideration for planning more than it is today, I don't see how one further restaurant tips the balance here when it comes to what some of us would call bad neighbours. Most of them are already present in one shape or form within a um, within 100 or so metres of this, um, this area of land. I therefore would like to propose the following amendment and I'll pause while I just paste it. Oh, it's already there. Thank you. Um, yep. So I'll, I'll read that out just for clarity. I know committee services like that. So that we replace section three with the following, that this committee notes that the petition asking it to reconsider its decision to the 14th of June not to lease the part of the Riacan Road car park for commercial use. Secondly, this committee resolves that it will reconsider the matter of marketing the site according to the terms outlined in report number 21 slash 92 of the property subcommittee of the 14th of June. And thirdly, this committee therefore remits officers to bring a report to the next meeting of the SPNR property subcommittee on the matter, which will additionally provide illustration of where in the town the replacement parking space could be provided. And for clarity, um, that next meeting is just before the end of February because I think we have a compressed timetable this time because of the, um, the elections that are happening in May. So thank you very much. I'd like to formally propose that. OK, 
Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Bailey, and I believe you have a seconder, Councillor Lane. Yes, thanks, Convener. I'm uh, happy uh, to uh, formally second uh, this amendment. I think we, although we've never ratified um, the petitions policy at the last uh, full council because of uh, time uh, barriers, um, I think that we've brought forward this, uh, the council's brought forward this um, petitions policy and um, we should listen to what people are saying. And they are asking us to reconsider something. Um, I, and at the first time, and I think that's democracy, um, we can only count the people who signed the petition. We can't, we can't count the people who didn't make uh, their views known one way or the other um, as as against a proposal, as uh, seemed to be some of the suggestion earlier on. I think that we, uh, because of uh, in bringing forward a petitions policy, we have to then uh, work with the, any petition that comes forward and not, this is the first one I know that's come forward, just dismiss it out of hand over uh, all arguments. People are asking us uh, and, Al and Alistair's um, sensible amendment asks for another up to date with more information to be brought forward uh, next month, at the end of next month, instead of us going back and saying the decision taken in June, um, there's no further information come forward. Obviously, there has been further information come forward, and I think we should take a look at it. Whether it changes anybody's mind or not, I think it's the democratic thing to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Lane. I'd only comment that, that in the absence of a petitions policy, um, <coughs> I, I agreed that the petition needed to be dealt with, and that's why it has come to this committee. So I, you know, I think it's unfair to accuse uh, us of dismissing a petition. This, this petition has been brought to this committee and has been debated uh, for some uh, almost two hours. So uh, other than that, uh, thank you for your comment. So we, we have a situation where we have a, a motion and an amendment and um, I have uh, nothing further to add to um, the comments that I made previously. Um, I'd like to thank all for their contributions and it could be moved to a vote. We have a comment from Councillor Wilson, sorry, before uh, we move Council, to a vote. Councillor Tom McEwen's in front of and me. Councillor McEwen, sorry, ahead of you. Councillor McEwen. Thank you, Convener. Uh, the, the only comment I wanted to make is you know, I'm going to support the amendment and my basis for doing that is actually reflected in how I voted and I've discussed this issue all the way through and and I, I don't think the McCallums have been treated in a fair and abbreviated comment, comments by the Council or by the processes that we have had. Uh, I think things have been dismissed too quickly. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very unique and very unusual thing to ask councils to do. But I imagine sitting here with COVID and everything else that's going on within the industries that these things are associated with, uh, that sometimes the unusual solutions are maybe the way forward. And I think it's a real shame that uh, we've been quite knee jerkly dismissive of this. Thank you. Thank you for your comment and certainly for my part, I would say that I have in no way been dismissive. Councillor Wilson. Uh, thanks, Convener. Um, we've had a, a lengthy debate. We've heard two deputations. Um, we've had a, a huge volume of questions for, for officers. Um, I've listened very carefully to all of that. I've read the copious emails and reports that we've had and I welcome them. Uh, because they are part of our democratic process. Um, the, and the arguments to and fro. Essentially, this is a decision about the principle of deciding if we should have the opportunity to advertise for commercial, a commercial development in a car park. Unfortunately, we don't have a extant policy on the matter, but we do have um, a long history of protecting our car parks for public use. And I think that's basically a very important thing. Um, I will support the motion today um, and I will support it in principle um, because I do not think that we should be 
taking steps to advertise car parking spaces, if you like, for commercial purposes. There are a whole host of different opportunities available for commercial enterprises um, to succeed. And I personally don't think that using council publicly owned car parks should become part of that scenario. Um, I do so purely in principle. I think it's unfortunate that we have uh, had an application that has advanced to a considerable extent and using it perhaps as, as an example of what might be. Um, I'm setting aside any detailed consideration of um, a, the, the, the the, the actual application that we've had, because it is simply an example of what might be. It is not the only option that might be available. Um, and I, I also consider that um, we have had ample information and ample opportunity, and I, I disagree with Councillor Tom McEwen with respect, Councillor McEwen, that we're not certainly being dismissive. If there's any, if there's any subject being discussed at length, and in depth, it's this one. And I make my decision to support the motion convener on the principle of what we should do as a council. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for your comment, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Bailey, you've asked to sum up. I'm happy for you to sum up. Thank you, convener. Um, I've listened to all of the arguments for and against here, and I think in particular, um, with regard to your comments, convener, um, and Councillor McCall's comments, as well as um, Councillor Wilson's comments, there seems to be a strange dichotomy here where in Perth, when a very similar matter came up around a development on the existing Thimble Road car park, the logic was very much um, that this council bought into was very much the the one that the the town needs to, uh, the, the city of Perth, sorry, I should say, needs to move beyond um, being obsessed with um, car parking as the only driver of economic growth um, with the climate emergency in mind and things like that, that um, we maybe need to review our, our priorities. However, in Pitlockery, that doesn't seem to be the case. And it seems that um, every parking space in Pitlockery is absolutely vital and um, we, we're not willing to consider any, any variation on that. So I just wanted to point out that dichotomy between the position we took in Perth, which relatively stands to lose a far, far greater number of um, parking spaces to a development, a development I agree with, I want to be clear, whereas in Pitlockery, um, a far, far smaller percentage of Pitlockery's car parking spaces are going. Um, but that seems to be a problem that could set a precedent. I think if we were worried about precedents, the precedent was set by the Thimble Row move far, far more loudly than it would be by this move. But that's all I want to say. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry, apologies, Councillor Bailey. I'm, I'm still suffering from a cold. Thank you for the summing up. OK, so we, we have a motion and amendment and we now move to the vote. Uh, Charlotte, would you like to take us through the vote, please? Yes, right, thank you. Uh, we have a motion by Councillors Lyle and McCall that the petition be noted and that no further action be taken. And the amendment by councillors Bailey and Lane, which was displayed on the screen for you, which is to note the position and to reconsidering, reconsider the marketing of the car park, but to bring forward a report to the next property sub to include an illustration on replacement parking spaces. And it's noted that the next property sub is on the 28th of February. OK, if I am. Um, Call out your name if you could indicate support for the motion or the amendment. Councillor Bailey. Amendment. Councillor Lane. Amendment. Councillor Lyle. Motion. Councillor McCall. Motion. Councillor McEwen. Amendment. Councillor Shires. Motion. Councillor Wilson. Motion. OK, that is the motion is carried with four votes to three. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. So the, the, the motion is carried. I'd just like to comment at this point. I thank you all for the contributions and thank Councillor Bailey for his amendment. It would um, be, <coughs> how would you say, churlish of me to, to uh, see any satisfaction from this because I don't and I, I can give the committee every assurance that I will work with the McCallum family to try and find an acceptable site within Pitlochry or beyond 
if they so choose. So thank you all for your time this morning. We now move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the minute of the meeting of the property subcommittee of the 25th of October. Can we agree the minute? Agreed. Agreed. So here we then uh, the learning estate programme progress update. Um, we have um, Mr Boland with us who may take us through that. Good morning. Good morning, convener. Good morning, committee. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, as we normally do, is just run through the main kind of content of the, the main body of the report, picking up some of the highlights, then I'll move on to the appendices. And when I get to the appendices, I'll take a pause after each project and have to take any questions. OK, so. Yes, thank OK, thank you. So this is the, the learning state update. Um, the, the latest update from the, the last one, which was on the 23rd of August, where we updated. So this is where we are currently. Uh, I'll just pick up a few paragraphs within the report. So in, in 2.2, obviously we're aware we, we still face the challenges within the construction industry regarding the, obviously the, the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. Also, we're experiencing uh, supply uh, pressures on the construction industry, which is obviously having an impact on materials being provided and costs with regard to projects. But that's nothing we're not familiar with uh, personally and uh, it's impacting across the whole of the country. In 2.3, uh, in relation to the, the pandemic, a lot of our internal resources are having to prioritise our learning state with regard to ventilation and updated guidance and reporting to the Scottish Government, which again is just adding challenges to, to the internal resources we have working on our learning estate projects. So moving down to some of the kind of key milestones um, in 3.3, um, I'm pleased to confirm prior to Christmas um, after um, experiencing drainage uh, challenges regarding the site and working with Scottish Water, we had to identify an appropriate solution to, to that, which is now being concluded and the plan submission was put in just before Christmas. Um, in addition, since the last uh, reporting of um, to this committee, the uh, Fuel Council agreed in October to increase the budget to £24 million. Uh, Meth and Primary School 3.4, uh, we, we draw down funding there in September at Strategic Policy and Resources Committee to, to replace the hall. Um, works commenced um, to demolish the, the current hall in October and initial enablement works have also been undertaken and also as part of that project we've um, included a new chin trail uh, and also a nursery outdoor play area has been relocated on the site. Moving on to North Mayton Balhousie and um, the replacement new school. Um, we signed off financial close at the end of October and works commenced on site in, in, in November. Um, we also um, un undertook a consultation regarding the name of the new school and the findings of that um, consultation exercise will be reported to Lifelong Learning Committee on the 31st of January. Moving, moving down on to 3.6, Perth Grammar School the refurbishment. Um, we completed the, the final uh, phase of the toilet refurbishment within the school and they were completed in October. 3.7, Rattery Primary School, which is a nursery extension and upgrade of, of the school. Um, they obviously commenced uh, uh, on site in the summer of last year and will complete um, this summer. Um, I'm pleased to confirm that the refurbished, refurbished classrooms are now complete and the nursery extension instruction structure is obviously underway as well. And finally, with regard to the main body of the report, Stanley Primary School, um, we've taken works forward to improve the nursery accommodation. We've upgraded uh, the existing classroom to accommodate the nursery and provide new toilets, changing facilities and the cloakroom. And the nursery also now benefits from direct, direct access to outdoor, outdoor space. So that's a kind of the main highlights within the report. So I'll move on now to the appendix. And as I said, <coughs> 
I will take a, a pause at the end of each project and, and I'm happy to take any questions. I also um, have a couple of colleagues on the call. If, um, if questions I can't answer them, I'll, I'll pass them on to my colleagues. OK, so Blagowry was a recreational centre was in the uh, main body of the report. Uh, and as I said, the plan was submitted prior to Christmas. Um, so we're just waiting on an updated uh, programme, um, but the project is uh, now moving forward and we wait planning approval. So I'm happy just to pause there and take any questions. Yeah, any questions? Put in the, Councillor Lane. Put in the table. Sorry, Councillor McEwen first, then Councillor Lane. My apologies, Councillor McEwen. That's fine, Camille. Thank you very much. Uh, Greg, you put in the table there for Blake Gowdy that you think the the plan application may be agreed in March. Is that wishful thinking, or is it likely that we're going to see this at planning in the next three meetings? Um, I could maybe ask. Um, I think we've probably, yeah, it's, it's probably still a bit, bit tight. Stephen, is Stephen on the call? Stephen Crawford or Brian Reid? Hi, Greg, yeah, Brian here. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Brian. Yeah, could you just update? Obviously, we submit, I've, I've updated the committee that planning was submitted prior to Christmas. And what would be your indication of a normal process and us having approval? What kind of time period? Yeah, they're also uh, every plan application is, diff uh, is different, as I'm sure everybody uh, is aware of here on the committee as well. So it'll be very dependent upon uh, how uh, how this one goes in line with information provided. We have went through the pre-validation process as well as a, a POA and a pre-application notice process at the end of last summer. So we've done quite a lot of work in advance of it, but we will need to wait once that's formally validated, uh, hopefully over the next several days, we will then get information from plan as we move uh, as we move forward. But uh, yeah, it can it can take anything, you know, from from three months to five months, depending upon just how how the committees fall, how the information falls. Uh, so we just await further information on that at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Councillor Lane. Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, I was just wondering. Um, when the construction phase of the recreation centre is going forward, will um, the recreation centre be fully operational, the swimming pool, etc., at this at the same time as the new build? Uh, Greg, I'll just answer that, yeah. yeah, just come in there, Brian. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Councillor. Yeah, the, the the plan is always that the 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 build won't have any any impact uh, directly onto the existing the existing centre. The full project will take place with the existing centre open and only upon which time the, the new centre opens will the old one then be demolished to make way for the new car park, etc. So yeah, absolutely, that's the plan. OK, that's good news. Thank you. OK, thank you. Carry thank on. You. Thank you, Keith. Um, so moving on, um, North Muirton, Balhousie replacement. Uh, we kind of covered that within the main body. So obviously a 19.9 million project, which will be a passive house standard. We continue to, to work through that on site, obviously. Um, we had the sods cutting exercise um, on the 6th of December, which was attended by the, the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Skills. Um, so, so we're on site. We do, we do face the challenges, as I, I talked about earlier, to do with the marketplace. But at the minute, everything is progressing and we anticipate the school will open in uh, Easter. 2023. Happy to take any questions. OK, I don't see any questions. Greg, carry on. Okay. Thank you, Convener. Um, moving on, the next one we have is uh, Perth Academy Refurbishment, which is um, a rolling programme due, due to the, the live environment uh, of the school and progressing the works. Um, so since the last committee, um, we've completed uh, phase two of the social space and classroom refurbishments. So they were all completed during the summer. We've also upgraded the, the sports hall um, and also in, improved lighting um, within the hall and the foyer. And also we put in uh, high speed fibre links to, to the site and also upgraded uh, the changing areas also during the summer and a further corridor uh, social space was completed during the October holidays. 
So works uh, are, are progressing there. And at the minute now, we've just um, employed external consultants, which then are working through the site regarding audiovisual and Wi-Fi wi upgrades, which is another part of the upgrade of, of the current school. And also um, the next phase, um, which we're in the development stage, which is looking at furniture replacement and design work, um, and also looking for a, a full electrical switch gear replacement. So that's the next kind of major part of, of the upgrade of the school. Um, and so I'll just pause there for any any questions. Hey, okay. Mr. Boland, morning, Willie Wilson here. Thanks, thanks for your report and thanks for the, the update. Um, just on phase three, I think you've outlined in the last paragraph in the report what's likely to be done. Um, is there anything else? Is, 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 is phase three the finish? Or is there a phase four? I'll ask Brian just to come in there. I Sure, Greg. Yeah. Yes, Councillor Wilson, good morning. Uh, no, absolutely, there will be uh, more phases following on, so there's, there still is uh, uh, quite substantial budget still left in there for all these infrastructure works as we keep uh, keep going on at the moment. So no, there will be further phases. It is very much a rolling programme of uh, of works and these will, will continue on. Thanks for that. Perhaps in the next report you might give us an indication of what these might be. Um, I think that would be that would be helpful. And is is the work on drainage that includes the grounds, um, the roofs and the gutters now completed? Because I know that was part of either phase one or phase two. The 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 grounds uh, the the grounds were there was quite a substantial piece of drainage work uh, that went on in the grounds that was completed. There are still uh, more works to be undertaken with the uh, with all the drain pipes and so forth. What's to do? So that's ongoing as part of uh, as part of the next phase as well. So that's part of the works that will be, be coming forward just now. Councillor Wilson, there's a uh, consultants and design team looking at that at the moment and all how the downwater and the rainwater goods, etc., can be can be treated and dealt with. So that's part of the ongoing works at the moment. Thank you. We could maybe get a, a, a short paragraph of an update on that in the, in the next report, please. Yeah, as well. absolutely. I'll put that in. Particularly important, particularly important for the users of the school, both staff and pupils, but particularly important the drainage works. Um, uh, overall in the grounds sur surrounding the, the, the nearby residents. Thank you. Thank yeah, you very much. Okay. Councillor Shires. Uh, Councillor Wilson asked my question, which was about the external works, but also just wider is about the, the communication of the you know different phases with the parent council, etc. Is that ongoing discussions? Because I know the external works question was something that had been raised with me. Yeah, no, we meet uh, Councillor Shears more and we we uh, we provide a, a written update to every parent council, so they're getting an update basically every five weeks. I think that they meet, so they're getting a full written update and a continuation of the story. And we've got uh, uh, regular meetings with the with the school as well. So yeah, everybody's very much updated and kind of aware of the the phases. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. No more questions on that, Greg. Okay, thank you. Um, so. <laughs> Perth Grammar School, similar to Perth Academy, we're obviously working through um, a phased programme, obviously with the school in operation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the toilet works were completed uh, in October and phase one, um, the plan is now underway regarding the, the classroom refurbishments. Um, so we're working through that to the next stage of the upgrade of Perth Grammar. Okay. No questions? No question, so I'll just move on. Yep. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, and the next one we have is, is Perth High School, which is the, the 58.3 million um, passive house uh, standard uh, new school, which will be operational August 24. Uh, we've submitted planning and we are obviously waiting uh, planning approval, um, but the project is, is progressing and Obviously, again, we, we will face the challenges of construction inflation, which is obviously a, a risk, um, but there's nothing else to, to report on Perth High, so that is progressing. And we work closely with the Scottish Futures Trust regarding this project as it's partly funded through uh, the Scottish Government funding. Happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr Wilson. Wilson. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to avoid using the term wishful thinking. Um, we might say optimistic um, in, instead. Um, 
but it's just it's a similar question in relation to the start dates and planning consent planning application agreed january 2022 well that's that that's that's where we are now i know it's been uh, in um and i know it's been considered um, by the planners uh, is that still on target or is it likely to be slippage on that and also a site start in march 2022 seems to me and to use your your expression miserable and tight um but um are we still on target for that or is that likely to slip a wee bit as well so i'll ask brian just to come in on 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 planning brian is any word do we expect planning we were end of the month we were no we're the, the earliest it'll be we're hopeful of making the uh february february planning date so we have been meeting with the planning officer They've been busy preparing the report. It wasn't done in time for the for the January meeting, so they're just trying to finalise some information at the moment. So we are hoping to be the February planning committee. Uh, best case, worst case, it would then be the March uh, the March planning committee uh, for for approvals. So that's where we stand at the moment on planning. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. And um, Greg, just for. Where are we with within knock on effects? Presumably that adds potentially six to eight weeks to the, the programme that we've we've got before us. Yes, Council Wilson. Yeah, you yeah, you would expect if if we're not through by the end of the month, and it, as Brian's indicating it's it's February or March, then you're maybe looking at a month or two um on before we actually go to, go to site. And obviously we still need to sign financial close um prior to that as well. I hadn't forgotten about that small matter. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, so uh, just to confirm, it will go to the, the planning committee. Yes, absolutely, because it's a major application because of the size of it, Councillor Wilson, then it, it must go to the to the planning committee because of the size of the application. Yes. Thank you. OK, Greg. OK, thanks, Kavina. Uh, and then the, the final one we have in the appendix today is uh, Ratley Primary School. We kind of covered that earlier. Um, so that's the 4.3 million investment within the Ratley Primary School classrooms uh, have been completed and we're extending the um, the nursery and further classrooms and the, the general purpose space will also be updated uh, or up upgraded, I should say. Um, but there's, there's nothing to report and we expect all works to be complete for uh, the new session uh, next year for, for the school. OK, thank you. Councillor McEwen. I suppose, Craig, that's what I wanted to confirm. In your table at the end, it says the nursery provision dates don't seem to match up with the construction completion dates. Is that because it's not? Yes, um, but I might add anything I say here, uh, Council McCure. It's just, yeah, the nursery will be complete, but there'll be still other works going on within the site okay. um, just to, to complete the whole work, which, um, Brian, I don't know if you want to add anything. Is that to do with the, the further uh, yes. staff, staff, staff room? and general? Yeah, the the, the main hall and the school building and things. There's just a couple of items infrastructure wise that we need to do next uh, summer during a summer break. So there's been certain cable trees, things you'll see if you went around the school just now. So we've done things we can. Some things need that that bit of extra length of time. So in all effects and purposes, most will be finished to the eye, but there's still works to come back and do in the in the summer holidays as well. So so yeah, it's quite quite standard. It's what's happened up at Letham and things as well. It's quite quite standard in these major projects that are happening whilst the school are, are in situ. That's cool. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. Councillor Shires. Thank you for that. Um, can I just ask what the additional spend is on the school on top of the money that's been invested in the nursery? It's quite, it certainly looks extensive refurbishment that I've seen. Yeah, yeah so Kavina, uh, um, obviously we had funding from, from the government um, towards this project I, and you, you're probably aware we're doing a lot more than the, the original kind of idea of strictly upgrading the nursery. Um, obviously, we had uh, engagement with local community and further investment is, is happening. So originally our uh, bid to the government was for, I think it was about 2.3 million. Um, so we were doing an, about an extra 2 million of investment than we originally anticipated. Thank you. OK, thank you. That brings um, that paper to an end, I believe. Are there any other questions that anyone wishes to ask just now or any comments that anyone wishes to make? Councillor Shire's comment. Thank you, Kevin. I'll just be brief um, to thank uh, Greg Boland, Brian, Carol and all their team because they've worked 
in very difficult circumstances to deliver these projects, you know, people working from home, teams being remote from each other, and, and it's really appreciated. Um, and also thanks to, to staff in the schools that have been particularly thinking about Rattray, uh, where it's a live school site and they've had these works ongoing, but also the, the academy too. Um, and just to, to take the opportunity to thank all the staff um, in the various schools that have been working through uh, you know, with uh, all this construction work ongoing on site, because it, it can't have been easy for everybody, but it's, you know, work that needed to be done and, and we are grateful to them all for it. OK, well, thank you very much for these kind comments and I'm sure everyone on the committee shares the sentiment. Agreed. Well. So Agreed. Agreed. OK, well, Agreed. that brings us to the end of, of the meeting this morning. So I'd just like to thank you all for your attendance. Thank you all for your consideration of the issues before us and wish you well for the rest of the day. Thank you.